Hey, all right, now what we're going to do is we're going to start tying everything up. Um, and I've kind of kept on using the illustration, kind of beating up old Thomas Aquinas for separating uh, faith and reason. But this whole issue of distinction, I mean, it's been going back all the way back to the days of Plato, and then a group after Plato called the Gnostics, who were really kind of taking a lot of his philosophy. They made a distinction between that which is spiritual and that with it which is physical. And so I think that the human mind, in order to follow that Gnostic trend, would eventually have to divide up those two concepts. You know, the natural world using natural uh, reason, and the spiritual world using spiritual intuition. You see, that is not the reality. The reality is that we have, you know, two sides of the same truth. And it's just like I said before, you know, when I say I believe, you know, I kind of jokingly said, I think it was in our first uh, segment, uh, dealing with atheism, that I believe there are angels, and, you know, I believe in this table. You know, I'm still believing, you know, they're not one type and another. They're just two different categories, but it's the same action that I'm doing. It's, I, it's still truth, still firm. So, is there any intersection between science and spirituality? And I want to go over these different parts to that. The first thing is, is that if we were to go back to that atheistic worldview, the early uh, atheists were all materialists. And they, therefore they believed in matter and mass. And that's all there really was. You know, all there is is what is physical and what's before us. You live, you die, you're done. But the problem is, is that with that, everything has to go by a strict order of evolution. And evolution is in a closed system that only comes from your environment. So what about the mind? Now, the mind is something that's immaterial. Of course, they will say we only have a brain, okay? So, the original evolutionist, atheist philosopher said we just have a brain, we don't have a mind. Or that our mind is just our brain, it's just the chemicals. But, the brain comes up with information and ideas that are not part of reality. For instance, geometry. Do we find in nature the perfect triangle? Even this, I mean, my fingers are kind of bent and crossed over. You know. it, it, we don't find, you know, these perfect geometry things. What about mathematics? When we start coming up with calculations, and we bring in new information. Does nature have a helicopter? Did we see a helicopter bird? You know, does nature have rocket ships? What about calculus? You know, th these ideas and dealing with imaginary numbers. That means the imagination comes up with things that are not in reality. That's new information that is not part of evolution. It's not part of the environment. You know, and so basically, when you look at the mind, the mind is not something that comes from the material. The mind has things, and feelings, and ideas, and principles. I mean, you're, you're watching the internet right now, aren't you? Is the internet something that you found out in the woods? No. Okay, was there any existence that you, you found from the internet? When man came out, you know, did lightning show him, you know, Windows 97? Well, maybe Windows 97, but not Windows 2000. Um, but, I mean, seriously, um, these minds are something that is not material. So, 
being that, I mean, even, you know, one of the most famous atheist philosophers converted over to theism, not Christianity, but he converted over to theism because of that argument. Because as soon as you admit that there are immaterial things such as minds, and of course, there are seven billion minds that we know of, and that's just human minds, okay? Well, then, the next step is that maybe there are minds that exist outside of life. Because if they are from a source that's not in the natural world, then they may not be natural. They could be immortal. And so if there's some immortal, immaterial thing, then there may be immortal, immaterial other things, other spirits. Demons, angels, Satan, God. Well then, we also deal with psychology. In psychology, we deal with the mind. We study the mind. We go a little bit more than just psychiatry with drugs. We talk about how a person feels, interprets, understands life. Well, that means that we've developed a science on the immaterial. Okay? You could argue it's a soft science, but it's still science. It's still reality. Well, if there's a reality to the immaterial world in the mind then there's an, a reality with the immaterial world in religion. People have a spirituality. Maybe because that has something to do with spirits. So now we have a reality of a spiritual world. Okay? Now it's not so blind, a leap of faith. And then, we have experiences. We experience things that are supernatural. Now, Yes, there are many people who would say there is no such thing as the supernatural. But yet there are millions and millions and several million experiences and accounts and eyewitnesses accounts of supernatural phenomena occurring. They may not all be revelation, they may not all be true, but they are all evidence. And of course we have that with prophecy. In Bible prophecy, and what we'll talk about in our next segment, what we have is factual, verified, supernatural accounts. So, that's kind of where we're going with things. And, you know, as I said before, we have that connection. Secularism has already been wiped off the plate because it has no absolute truth, and that's where you kind of go back and look at my earlier videos, and they're numbered, they have different titles, but they're all numbered, so go back to number one. And then religion is irrational. So, religion doesn't have truth. Secular uh, uh, criticism the um, doesn't have the truth. Revelation from God has the truth and we experience that in the reality of Christianity.